Chris Pine, who once portrayed the action hero Jack Ryan, never had a chance to revisit the character in any of the sequels. His only appearance was in Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit, made back in 2014. Pine probably saw Jack Ryan as an opportunity to star in a franchise, reminiscent of Matt Damon's Born series. Join us in this video as we explore why Pine harbors regret about the Jack Ryan film and also why it is actually worth another look. First, why did Chris Pine take on the Jack Ryan film? In 2014, when Pine undertook Shadow Recruit, his star was rising. His role in Star Trek had boosted his celebrity profile, and Jack Ryan potentially brought the possibility of creating a franchise similar to the Jason Bourne movies. He was happy for more work, which was possibly the primary reason he signed up for the project. But he also said he was a fan of previous Jack Jack Ryan movies. These featured legends like Alec Baldwin and Harrison Ford. He admits it was an exciting and fast-moving time in his career. However, the pressure that comes with being a leading man was different from what he'd been used to up until that point. He was headlining with Star Trek, but the Jack Ryan films were a different animal altogether. Shadow Recruit's reception was tepid, to say the least, but the film does have several redeeming factors. Stay with us. We'll be bringing you those in a moment. And why did he once harbor deep regrets over the franchise? Chris Pine was passionate about Jack Ryan. He says so himself, but he became bothered by the film's lackluster performance. It was an action thriller with everything going for it, but it didn't shine at the box office at all. Critics also gave it a lukewarm reception. Rotten Tomatoes scored it at 55%, which means only the thinnest sliver of a majority actually liked the film. The general audience score was even lower at 53%. This performance poses a threat to any Jack Ryan sequels. He says it is one of his deepest regrets, the fact that the cast and crew didn't get it 100% right. According to him, it is a great franchise in a great genre. In August 2018, Amazon Prime revitalized the Tom Clancy character in a new way. John Krasinski is now the title character, and he was attracted to the reality and grounded nature of the character compared to the more flashy and modern heroes. He told The Hollywood Reporter he was taken by the idea of playing someone whose superpower is their brain, and of course, in the case of Jack Ryan, his instincts. In a world of capes and shooting stuff out of the palms of your hands, he quipped, it is a pleasant change to focus on real heroes and real people. Krasinski put a lot of work into the character and probably took it places where other films hadn't, and the TV series allowed him to create a more complex character than a movie would have. While movies focus on a bad guy and a good guy with very little that shows the deeper complexities of individuals, the series allows the storytellers to get more sophisticated and realistic when creating characters. If you still think Chris Pine's Jack Ryan should simply be written off, think again. There are many reasons not to, and we're about to get to those. Stay with us. But Chris Pine's Jack is worth another look. Four actors have done Jack Ryan since the debut of the character in The Hunt for Red October in 1989. That was when Alec Baldwin took on the role. Each actor has brought a different interpretation and energy to the role, with only Ryan's idealistic nature remaining consistent. The character is based based on Tom Clancy's novels, which are essentially action-slash-espionage adventures that fly off the bookshelves on the day they're released. The lack of consistency between the movies makes the series novel and contributes to the film's ability to draw fans, even if not an overwhelming number. Amazon's series has been renewed for a third time, and the spin-off, a film called Without Remorse, focuses on Tom Clancy's John Clark character. This film is a about to be released. These new projects promise to blow new life into the Ryanverse after Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit. Chris Pine's version of the character turned out to be the lowest grossing installment to date. It generated nothing more exciting than a collective shrug from audiences and critics. In the end, Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit earned only $60 million of a total $135.5 million budget. 
and it failed to kickstart a new film series. The Jack Ryan franchise finds itself among a whole coterie of literary adaptations now set for television. These include Alex Cross, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, Jack Reacher, and The Lincoln Lawyer. All of these were pitched as a film series kickoff. Shadow Recruit can easily be overlooked as a cinema misstep, but the film, directed by Kenneth Branagh, still has many charms. Chris Pine is the perfect leading man to guide the Jack Ryan origin story. For more on that, stay with us. Now, a few reasons not to write the Shadow Recruit off. Firstly, Shadow Recruit isn't based on any of Tom Clancy's novels. It shifts the focus to the Jack Ryan origin story instead. The film imagines Ryan as a protagonist post 9-11, and the story deals with global financial markets. In the film, Chris Pine has fistfights with assassins, and Kenneth Prana speaks in an unforgettable, goofy Russian accent. There's a refreshing seriousness in Pine's Jack Ryan. It is actually quite rare among action heroes. Jack is a military man by training, but he retains a sort of everyman spirit when he's thrust into the spy world. This is absolutely essential to the character. Nanzo Anosie is the assassin, and following Jack's first ever encounter with him, his CIA mentor, Thomas Harper, Kevin Costner, debriefs him about this momentary violence. It's an exposition scene, but it serves to remind us that Jack wasn't really prepared to take a life, despite all his military training. Kevin Costner is one of the pillars of the film. He actually considered playing Jack Ryan in The Hunt for Red October, and he brings a gruff, no-nonsense attitude to the CIA official who recruits a wounded pine in the opening scene of the film. Thomas Harper warns Ryan about several things up front, not least of which is the perils of domestic life in the field of espionage. Costner brings a kind of weariness to the role that only comes with knowing, and when a spat between Jack and his fiancée, Kathy Muller, played by Keira Knightley, interrupts Costner's monologue, he even has the opportunity to show his comic ability. The big question is, will Shadow Recruit stand the test of time? To find out, keep watching to the end. Now, Jack Ryan's evolution with Chris Pine at the helm. A really big part of the story is Ryan's double life and the early relationship struggles. This is not something filmmakers spent time with in previous installments. Ryan was a caring father and a family man under the hands of Harrison Ford and Alec Baldwin, but Pine got the chance to show the character as a romantic lead. The central tension of the film is all about Pine's relationship with Knightley, and the chemistry between the two hits the jackpot. It is so convincing, in fact, that it becomes easy to overlook some of the spots when the writing becomes tedious. The way the Kathy Knightley character was constructed is less than great. She's a somewhat tropey nurse character who has to rehabilitate Ryan after his traumatic war wound. The rest we've seen. She falls in love with him and he with her. She then follows him to Moscow just to find out if he's unfaithful. And this is where the writing begins to stretch the imagination. That said though, the moment Kira Knightley is put in an action sequence, she comes right into her own. She has fun and it shows. During the Moscow scenes, Jack and Kathy are on an equal footing. They're thrust into an assignment they're probably not ready for, and they're navigating the big questions in their relationship at the same time. In a climactic confrontation with the main villain, Brana's Viktor Cherovin, all of this tension bubbles to the surface. Brana is seemingly infatuated with Russian gangsters with a penchant for triggering global catastrophes. His performance here is positively bizarre. The dialogue of his character is really nothing but vague threats, and the hushed monotone Brana delivers them with is off-putting at the very least. And this is the strange days Shadow Recruit occupies. It's a space somewhere between the style and grit of the Bourne and Bond movies, but it also indulges in seriously campy jargon found only in spy movies. Finally, will Shadow Recruit stand the test of time? As a Clancy adaptation, this is a straightforward film, but it is more than a ton of fun. There's a methodical pace in the expositional scenes, and it doesn't have a feeling of being buried by rewrites and reshoots, even though it was in development for more than 10 
years. It's a great introduction to Jack Ryan. It ditches so many of the antiquated Cold War attitudes that the earlier Jack Ryan stories were full of. And while it does reference Clancy's work, it is still a standalone film, and the sequel tease at the end is also mild. Many films get buried under the weight of their self-created mythology, and of course, the expectations of being the launchpad for a franchise. But Shadow Recruit has a breeziness to it. Even if it is forgettable, it's a fantastic way to spend around 100 minutes on a lazy Sunday afternoon. And that, folks, is how we end this video. Thanks for joining us, and remember to keep your eyes open for the next upload.